Uh, Rory, breaking news coming out of your team, Chelsea Football Club. Uh, Enzo Fernandez has apologised to his Chelsea teammates, we believe. Here to go through it all with us is our reporter, Ben Jacobs, uh, who's out in Atlanta with Chelsea on the pre-season tour. Good afternoon, Ben. How are you doing? Yes, good afternoon and good morning here from Atlanta. Good morning to you. Um, what, what have you heard about this then, Ben? Where's this all come from? Well, as we know, Enzo Fernandez had live streamed on social media a discriminatory chant that was both racist and transphobic. And Wesley Fofana, the Chelsea defender, has said that it's uninhibited racism. And the French Football Federation had also made an official complaint to FIFA. And that prompted Chelsea to take this very seriously. And as a result, they have held an investigation and remotely, to begin with, held talks with Enzo Fernandez, who has now returned here to Atlanta. So he arrived yesterday and the big question was, how would he be received by his teammates and what would Chelsea do next? And we now understand at TalkSport that the investigation has led to two things. Number one, Enzo Fernandez immediately apologising in person to his teammates. He then trained and had lunch with them. And number two, Enzo deciding to make a voluntarily meaningful contribution to an anti-discrimination charity, which Chelsea have decided to match via their own foundation. And that's all led to Chelsea believing internally that the matter is now closed. And they've used Rhys James, the club captain, and Axel de Sassi to represent the player voices throughout a very thorough and difficult process. And now Chelsea will be hoping that the matter is closed. And the key thing is obviously going to be that relationship between Enzo Fernandez and the French players within the Chelsea mm. squad going forward. Ben, Chelsea consider the matter to be closed. Is that simply a way of preserving their relationship and trying to insulate their £107 million footballer from any further criticism? Well, I think Chelsea have to look at it from a club perspective. And there is this wider issue of the Argentine Football Association and several players singing the chant. But from Chelsea's perspective, as you say, they need to make sure that Enzo Fernandez can be reintegrated and every player has been consulted. So the Chelsea position is very much that they believe the apology has been accepted and that the matter is now closed. What we have to wait and see is in practice how Enzo Fernandez does reintegrate and what the dynamic is like. Because, of course, Enzo Maresca won't want anything to overshadow his first pre-season with the club. But Chelsea believe that Enzo Fernandez has been very mature. I know those seeing the live stream may say the opposite. And in addition to that, the apology to begin with was via social media and perhaps not worded in a way that everybody endorsed. But now Enzo Fernandez has had time to have reflection and away from the squad. And he felt that it was important to reiterate that apology, but also privately speak to the players individually as well. So the Chelsea position is now that there will be no fractures and that they can all pull towards this new era under Enzo Maresca. And the first indication of that will be today because we're going down to an open training session so the expectation is that we'll see Enzo with the French players. And if they're laughing and joking and training together effectively, then that will be further indication that Chelsea believe this matter is closed. From what we from what we heard from Chelsea when this first came out, Wesley Fofana saying it was un, uninhibited racism. You know, there's a lot of players that unfollowed Enzo Fernandez on social media, Malo Gusto, Axel Dizazzi, for example. Do you feel like this apology... And this this statement from Chelsea Football Club saying that the matter is over. Do you feel like those players that were so incensed a few weeks ago, do you think this will be enough to pacify them? Well, I think there's two things. One is Chelsea feeling their investigation is over and they can try to move on. And two is actually dealing with the issue at heart. And we have to distinguish between the two because the Chelsea players will still feel exactly the same, no doubt, that the chant was racist and transphobic. And therefore, conversations have to continue. So an apology doesn't end things. It's one solution, as is the contribution to an anti-discrimination charity and Chelsea matching that via their foundation. But what a lot of Chelsea players will want is for continued dialogue and education to make sure that this kind of thing never happens again from Enzo Fernandez or any other player or fans or anyone outside of Chelsea. So we cannot take 
the racist chants or racism in or outside of football lightly. So when Chelsea sources refer to the matter as closed, that's specifically their investigation and a belief that the squad can find a way of moving past this. But it's not to say that anyone at the football club, the French players, Enzo Fernandez or Chelsea's leadership, believe that there isn't still an issue to address which is broader than just Enzo Fernandez. And that is, of course, anything anti-discriminatory in football. And that's why they're hoping that Enzo Fernandez's financial contribution and the one that Chelsea are making helps move forwards that conversation and continues to educate so things like this don't happen again. Education is always important when we have these discussions, but I actually think this is a cop-out, to be honest. I think this was the chance for Chelsea Football Club to change the narrative around racism in this country when it came to their club, what's on their doorstep. Now, we've had these conversations before. What's unconscious racism? racism. What is racism? That was racism. He live-streamed a video singing clearly very racist language and homophobic language. Now, he's a young guy. We're all stupid. We all make mistakes, OK? He wasn't the only one there who'd done that. But I think leaving it until now to sort out their investigation, when he's already been to River Plate, where he had a, a, a wonderful, brilliant time, smiling wearing the River Plate shirt, when all of his teammates are still not had that face-to-face -face apology from Enzo Fernandez, it was ridiculous. And then Enzo Maresca's press conference, I thought, was just absolutely tragic to sit there and say oh you know he's apologised you've got nothing else to, to worry about here Chelsea had to get this right and I'm sorry but I've heard from so many people so many people who said that this is just another slap in the face to black people in football and not being respected for their skin colour it's so easy to discriminate people sorry to, to, to put people out and expel people from the foot club, football club, club from other things but when it comes to racism or just if you can just contribute some of your millions to a charity and some more education then that's fine he should have served a ban for this well what's, what's interesting Shaban here is that if a Chelsea fan was singing a racist song in the Matthew Harding lower there's no amount of money that would prevent that fan from being banned from the club regardless of what was said by a governing body regardless of anything Chelsea Chelsea Football Club would make a stand and they would ban the fan mm. but because Enzo Fernandez is worth 107 million quid and they're trying to protect their asset it's donate some money and the chant effectively goes away. Chelsea have closed, and that's closed bad. the matter. That's ben, poor. ben, do you think there's any? Do you think that Chelsea should have taken a, a a broader, more severe stand with regard to Enzo Fernandez? Well, I think first of all, the investigation hasn't necessarily fully concluded. So, if any other facts come to light, for example, the AFA investigation or FIFA, then there's always the ability for further punishments. I think that why Chelsea didn't deal with it earlier, and you definitely make some valid points, is simply due to the fact that Enzo Fernandez was not with Chelsea. So the argument from Chelsea's perspective, whether rightly or wrongly, will be that he only returned yesterday, and that's when they tried to resolve the matter, having worked on it privately, but just not shared any information or made any statements before that. But definitely people that have heard the chants, myself included, will be offended by it. And it may well be, as you rightly say, that if it was a fan or if it was a footballer that was not worth 100 million, the approach might be slightly different. But of course, a fan doesn't have thousands and thousands of pounds to put towards an anti-discrimination charity either. So Chelsea are obviously in a very difficult position. And whereas Enzo Maresca in his press conference did not go into much detail and simply said his footballers are not bad human beings, Rhys James admitted that it was a difficult situation. So at this stage, I think all we can really say is that Chelsea have done everything internally to try and stabilise things as far as their club is concerned. But now what they need to do is make sure that they treat this matter and racism seriously. Otherwise, it will appear to some, as you rightly say, that perhaps they're thinking more about the footballer than the issue at hand. Now, Chelsea would be very clear in their position. And I'm sure when we hear from Enzo Maresca in around about three hours time, he'll make this point that they're not taking this lightly. It's just a series of steps they've had to take privately and eventually when we get to the press conference later publicly to resolve this with Enzo Fernandez at the same time as the AFA and several other Argentine players being involved as well and on different time zones too. So it hasn't been easy from Chelsea's point of view. But again, I reiterate, the matter is only closed 
if the players can find a way to move forwards with mm. this. I Chelsea know. believe that's the case, mm. but we're going to have to wait and see. And the proof is ultimately in the pudding. Yeah, Ben Jacobs, a reporter there, following Chelsea out in the pre-season tour just now in Atlanta. Ben, thank you very much for coming on and for sharing that detail. Rory, this is your football club. Mm. This is another classic example of racism not mattering. You can get away with it. Player or fans seem to be getting away with it. I don't. I don't think that the club have handled this well. I didn't no. think Enzo Maresca handled it, handled it well, and I don't see how it hasn't resulted in Chelsea making a stand. Like regardless of whether it's a Chelsea issue, regardless of whether it happens on your watch, he represents Chelsea. He's a Chelsea player, and therefore it is a Chelsea issue. Even if it happens on the international duty, he is a Chelsea player, and it is Chelsea. We, we couldn't. We couldn't get to him. No, it's really. But he's in River Plate. Mm. Are you doing also, me a favour? Also, did you see the footage of him in the stadium? And th- and then the and fans gre- and the fans greeted him with that, that song, chant. and he was standing on the pitch, smiling. He, yeah. No, I, I think I think there is Madness. there is a real problem, and I'm surprised I'm surprised by Chelsea because they needed to make a real stand here, and ultimately he he's paid his way out of this. He's made a donation, and people are suggesting that the donation is enough. It's a facade. And like I said before, it's because Enzo Fernandez is worth a hundred odd million quid. That's why they're doing this. If he wasn't that, mm-hmm. if he was a youth player, he would have been sacked. Could have been out. He would have been sacked. And and equally, if you're a fan, if a fan at the ground sings that exact song, they will be banned from Chelsea for three years. Undoubtedly, they will be banned. They will be fined. They will have their season ticket taken away. Why Enzo Fernandez is being treated differently, I I really don't know. But it's a it's a sad day for Chelsea Football Club. He's a 23 year old talent. He's an exceptional football player. But this was the chance to make a stance and make a difference and show that you are really taking this seriously. Maybe there will be a ban. I don't think it's right that it just ends here. I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve a second chance. No, he deserves a ban. He obviously deserves a ban. Okay. I don't see how this hasn't resulted in a ban and paying your way out of trouble. Ultimately, for a footballer, particularly particularly a football as as well as 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 flush as Enzo Fernandez charging him making this a financial issue is the least significant thing you can do to him okay. he has very deep pockets yeah on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport